the U.S. has just pulled off a move that almost no one expected. After years of preventing China from accessing cutting-edge AI hardware, President Trump announced on December 8, 2025, that NVIDIA would once again be allowed to sell its high-end H200 AI processors to Chinese firms. In theory, this should have triggered a buying frenzy worth billions of dollars. Instead, something bizarre happened. Chinese companies aren't lining up. They're backing away. The very customers who were once thought to be starving for these chips are now declining them. And that has left the global tech industry stunned and asking why this apparent breakthrough is collapsing before it even begins. To see how this situation unfolded, it helps to rewind to late 2022. That's when the Biden administration imposed sweeping export controls on advanced semiconductors, cutting China off from NVIDIA's A100 and H100 chips, as well as AMD's MI250. This wasn't a symbolic move. It was designed to directly limit China's access to the world's most powerful computing tools. The impact was immediate and severe. NVIDIA, which once controlled about 95% of China's AI chip market, suddenly had no access at all. In an instant, roughly a quarter of NVIDIA's data center revenue evaporated. Analysts later estimated that in just one quarter, NVIDIA may have missed out on close to $8 billion in sales from a single product category. At the heart of the current debate is NVIDIA's H200 processor. Built on the Grace Hopper platform, the H200 delivers performance that dwarfs the H20 chip NVIDIA was later permitted to sell under earlier restrictions. That H20 was intentionally weakened to meet export rules and was widely seen as a poor substitute. Meanwhile, Chinese tech giants such as Alibaba, Tencent, and Baidu were struggling to keep pace in AI development without access to top-tier hardware. In both Washington and Silicon Valley, the logic seemed obvious. If the U.S. ever relaxed the rules, Chinese firms would immediately rush back, orders would surge, and American chipmakers would recover lost ground. That assumption collapsed on December 8. President Trump announced publicly that NVIDIA could resume exports of the H200 to China. He claimed to have personally discussed the decision with President Xi Jinping and presented the move as a strategic win that balanced national security with economic growth. Trump argued that previous policies forced U.S. companies to waste enormous sums developing inferior products while slowing innovation and costing American jobs. From the outside, it looked like a political and economic victory wrapped into one, but the fine print told a very different story. The new approval came with strict limitations. Only select commercial buyers in China would qualify, and every single sale would need individual approval from the U.S. Commerce Department. Buyers would be investigated, usage would be examined, and approvals could be denied with little explanation. Any connection to government, military, or research institutions was completely prohibited. On top of that, Washington retained the power to pause or cancel shipments at any moment. End-use declarations, audits, and ongoing compliance checks were built into the process. Even the logistics were complicated. The chips would be produced in Taiwan, shipped first to the United States for security screening and only then forwarded to China, turning delivery into a slow, politically sensitive journey. Then came the financial catch. The U.S. government would claim 25% of the revenue from these chip sales. Whether through tariffs, licensing structures, or other mechanisms, one out of every $4 earned would flow back to Washington. Earlier proposals involving the weaker H-20 chips had included a 15% cut, which already proved unworkable. Raising that figure to 25% dramatically changed the economics, especially for products that already sell for tens of thousands of dollars per unit. This policy wouldn't just affect NVIDIA. It would apply to other American chipmakers as well. And this is where expectations completely unraveled. China showed little interest. Reports suggest Beijing is considering its own approval system to tightly control which domestic companies could even purchase the H200. Official statements from China's foreign ministry were cautious and vague, offering polite language about cooperation without any real excitement. Behind the scenes, industry insiders say many Chinese firms are either hesitant or outright unwilling to place orders. After years of being shut out, the sudden opportunity no longer looks appealing. The core issue is trust and control. Chinese companies see these chips as a vulnerability rather than an advantage. Their usage would be monitored their supply could be cut off overnight, 
and their operations would remain exposed to political shifts in Washington. There are lingering concerns about hidden access points, surveillance risks, and limits on how the hardware could be used for training advanced AI systems. In the end, what was meant to be a lucrative reopening of trade now looks like a deal with too many strings attached, leaving China to quietly step away instead of rushing back in. For any major technology firm, letting a foreign power that views it as a strategic rival control essential computing infrastructure is a risk no company can accept. Analysts have warned bluntly, central computing capabilities must never be vulnerable to external control, especially from the United States. Beyond national security, the financial logic no longer adds up. These chips already carry prices in the tens of thousands of dollars. Add a 25% surcharge, layer on compliance and legal costs, and factor in unpredictable supply, and the total becomes exorbitant. Chinese companies quickly realize that buying these products is paying a premium for hardware tied up with too many restrictions. Moreover, the technology itself is behind the curve. The H200 relies on the Grace Hopper architecture rather than the state-of-the-art Blackwell B200, which remains off-limits, and it does not approach the capabilities of the upcoming Vera Rubin series. In practical terms, for some workloads, the B200 is almost 10 times faster. This means China would be paying inflated prices for outdated technology, perpetually lagging behind the latest advances. Chinese firms are effectively forced to chase yesterday's innovation, never fully accessing the most advanced chips. The most decisive factor is China's reduced dependence on foreign processors. What U.S. policymakers failed to foresee is the rapid pace of domestic development. In 2018, China's semiconductor equipment localization was just 12%. By 2024, it had climbed to 40%, nearly tripling in six years. Rather than slowing China down, sanctions accelerated local innovation. Companies like Huawei are now investing over 20% of revenue into r and D. Roughly $71 million every single day. Huawei has cultivated a domestic ecosystem encompassing chip design, materials, manufacturing, and packaging. The impact on U.S. tech firms has been immediate. NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Huang, revealed that the company went from controlling 95% of the Chinese market to zero almost overnight. Not because of competition or product failure, but because Beijing barred American chips. This shift became formalized on September 17, 2025 when China's Cyberspace Administration issued new rules. ByteDance, owner of TikTok, and Alibaba had to immediately halt testing and cancel purchases of NVIDIA's RTX Pro 6000D, which had been engineered specifically for compliance with U.S. export rules. These chips were intended to replace the earlier banned H20, and companies had already begun large-scale trials. The directive stopped all sales instantly. By fall 2025, restrictions intensified. In November, state-backed data centers were ordered to remove foreign processors or cancel pending orders. Any project under 30% completion had to strip out installed American chips. With China investing more than $100 billion into AI infrastructure aligned with government priorities, these regulations carried real consequences. U.S. companies were not only blocked, but replaced, leaving NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel scrambling. At the center of the fallout is U.S. Treasury Secretary Scott Besant, formerly of Soros Fund Management, a man familiar with rapid financial swings from global miscalculations. He helped profit from Black Wednesday in 1992 and later billions against the Japanese yen. Now, he oversees export restrictions causing American tech giants to lose revenue under policies he must publicly support. In August 2025, Besant framed a deal allowing NVIDIA and AMD to pay 15% of their Chinese revenue in exchange for export licenses, a move endorsed by the Trump administration. Yet, China refused to purchase, leaving NVIDIA with zero sales despite the agreement. Production of the H20 had already been halted due to security concerns. On December 8, 2025, Trump announced that NVIDIA could sell advanced H200 chips to approved Chinese buyers if the U.S. received 25% of the revenue, claiming Xi Jinping had responded favorably. But for NVIDIA, the damage had already occurred. In 2024, NVIDIA made $130 billion, with China contributing roughly 13%. In the first quarter of 2025, 
China accounted for $5.5 billion, or 12.5% of revenue. Following new export restrictions in April, NVIDIA took a $4.5 billion hit due to inventory and purchase obligations, unable to ship $2.5 billion in H20 revenue in Q1. By Q2, H20 sales to China were zero, resulting in an estimated $8 billion lost for the year. Analysts estimate that about 1 million H20 chips, generating $12 billion in 2024, vanished from the market. Qualcomm faces an even larger challenge. China represented 64% of its revenue in 2023. Its processors power smartphones for Xiaomi, Oppo, and Vivo, shipped worldwide in massive volumes. Without Chinese manufacturing, Qualcomm struggles to fund innovation. Apple faces similar risks, deriving nearly 19% of global earnings from China in 2023. China is not just a customer, it is Apple's production hub. Factories, suppliers, and logistics chains for global launches rely on Chinese operations, so any restriction hits both sales and production. Meanwhile, China's domestic semiconductor ecosystem is growing rapidly. Cambricon Technologies achieved 4,300% revenue growth in early 2025, reaching 2.88 billion yuan in six months after a 530 million yuan loss the prior year, posting a first-ever profit of 1.04 billion yuan. Goldman Sachs projects Cambricon's AI chip shipments to grow from 143,000 units in 2025 to 2.1 million by 2030. Huawei revealed its AI accelerator roadmap in September 2025, including the Taishan 950 Superpod, a multi-chip system designed for general computing and AI, set to launch in early 2026. Using a unified bus interconnect, multiple chips operate as a single system. Meanwhile, Huawei's Ascend 910C and 920D have already entered mass production.